Hey, this is William Tincup and Ryan Leary, and you are listening and watching the Use Case Podcast. Ryan, how are you doing today? Fantastic. How are you? That's the big question. I'm doing well. <laughs> I'm doing well. It's about 104 outside in Arlington, Texas, oh, no. so uh, about a normal average no. day here for us. No, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been storming ever since last night here. Ah, no. Nah. We don't we don't have those things in the summer. No. We don't they happen elsewhere in the United States. Sadly we're we always do. jealous. <laughs> so David, uh first of all, would do us a favor and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Sure. Thanks, Ryan and William. Um I'm David Wax. I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Handwritten. And it's handwritten with a Y because everything when I started the company had to have a Y in it, like Lyft. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so what Handwritten is, is uh, it is the largest provider of automated handwriting services in the world. We um, were 10 years old. We use 175 robots. Each of these robots holds a real pen and right. it writes out notes at scale. So, and then we write out the envelope, put a real stamp on it and mail it. So what we try to do, it came from my need to send out handwritten notes, uh, but also my laziness and uh, disorganization where I couldn't get my act together to go out and get the cards and write them and hand cramp and all the rest. So what this does is this turns sending handwritten notes as easy, makes it as easy as sending an email. See, uh, what, I, what I love about this, and Ryan will hate this, but what I learned about this is uh, Jerry Jones, the owner, general manager of Dallas Cowboys. Already hate it. Yep. Yep. Years ago, he had a he had a thing yep. that would do his autograph, and you could just kind of put whatever the bit was underneath it, and it would put his autograph on it. And I thought it was fascinating because because I'm sure he gets a lot of requests, especially here locally. You know, tons of requests to sign photos of players and whatever the bit is, right? And so I'm like, he can't. There's no way he can sit down there and do fifty thousand autographs or whatever the bit is, and. and it was funny here in Dallas to hear on Sports Talk Radio, people were, half of the people were like, well, it just doesn't seem genuine. That's not authentic. It's, it's the, I'm like, that just seems really efficient <laughs> to me. Yeah, yeah. I, that's probably my big oh, – so, you know, um, we actually have some very well-known um, football players using us just for their yeah. own personal correspondence. I was surprised. Not just signing their autograph, but actually, like, writing out – handwritten notes. I didn't realize football players cared, especially these ones who are pretty high profile, but right. apparently they do. Um, so, so my answer to that argument is let's go back to the 1960s and imagine you had a bad flight on TWA or Pan Am and you wanted to complain. So you got out a pen and you wrote a letter to the CEO of Pan Am, right? Right, right. And they right. wrote you a letter back and signed it. Now, I'll bet you dollars to donuts they didn't actually sit down and write that letter. 100%. They had their secretary write mm -hmm. that letter and maybe sign it or maybe they had an old school auto pen do the signing too. So is what we do any less genuine than what's no. been done forever? If you're well, a nonprofit I and you want to send out a thousand thank you notes to all your, um, you know, your donors. What do you do? You don't sit down and write a thousand thank you notes. You no. have a pizza party. You have to take care. And you, you have, have to. You, know, you have a hundred well, volunteers do it. So you think so of Congress. It's no think, different. No, and I, I did an internship in D.C. for the Smithsonian it's back in the early 90s. And uh, my best friend did his internship for a senator. Yeah. And and they wrote his signature, so they signed the intern signed his signature. They didn't even have an auto pen. Yeah, and so they basically they would sign photo. It was a stock photo of the senator, and and they would sing it. So he brought like a stack of photos over one day, and we're he's just them. and he's just signing them. I'm like, my whole life I, is like well, completely I'm, ruined. Now you're gonna tell me <laughs> Santa Claus isn't real? No, no. Like, come first on. of all, I think it's genius. Absolutely, it I think is. I love it. Because when you said it comes from you know, uh, being lazy, I think of that Bill, uh, Bill Gates quote about the best developers are, are lazy because they want to find a faster way of doing things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and this is one of those things that just seems like a great efficiency. Yeah. Okay. Notes need to be written. Personalization needs to happen. doesn't mean that you have to do it. It just needs right. to happen. At least what it is is it's – I'd say it's a step above – printing something out, 
my last business was uh, text messaging. So, right. you know, just to tell you a quick story, um, you know, the, the, it was very, you know, you'd send a text message, people would respond great. This one, we have piano, a piano tuner that uses a small time, right? right? But he'll go into your house once a year. You only need to tune a piano once a year. He'll tune your piano, have an automation set up to thank that person with the thank you they deserve. In other words, a handwritten mm -hmm. note afterwards saying, thank you for having me in your house. And then a year later, when he comes to your house, he often sees that handwritten note standing up on the piano. So not only is it opened, not only is it read, it is put on display. Right. And you could write an email, that's not gonna get printed out and stuck there. You can send a text message, nobody's gonna take a screenshot and print it out and stick it there. But handwritten notes have a special p place. Even if they're not a thousand percent authentic, it's still that notion that you're trying to do something different and in a more elevated way. And that's kind of where you know this fits in. I always joke, and I don't often put this on podcasts, but I'll say the, the unofficial slogan of handwritten, you know, the, the slogan of Hallmark is when it's good enough to send the very best. The unofficial slogan of handwritten is when it's almost good enough to send the very best, because you cannot scale yourself no. to send a hundred thousand of these, no. but you know, they need to go out Pride. and that's, that's what handwritten helps. Yeah. You with. Well, so, so a couple things here. One, I had zero clue that this was done by robots. I, I actually thought it was <laughs> run through printed, like it, it was printed off, right? Like it's actually, some of them, <laughs> yeah, some are, but not. Yeah. Us. So it's actually. That's pretty cool, number one. So I like that. Yeah, so we passed the smudge test. Right, um, right. And then for those of that, um, you know, so you can lick, lick your finger and smudge the ink and it smudges because it's written in Pilot G2 ballpoint pen. Right. Um, the other thing is pen seems to follow the contours of the paper. And we use very high quality vellum mm. paper. So it's bumpy. And you really notice that. Right. And then unlike, you know, some of these people like, like window installers, they'll send you a piece of paper that looks like it's handwritten, but it's like printed in brush script right, from right, the 1990s. Right. That's what I'm talking it's about. It's just, yeah. it fails. And, you know, um, you have to do it in such a way that, you know, we take a lot of, we, we put a lot of work into the handwriting. So we randomize the characters. So if you write two O's, two O's together look different than two O's apart. Two O's apart look different, you know, right. one hmm. on right. one side, you know, we, we just, we do all that. We warp the text. We, 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 there's a lot of work that goes in to make sure that it looks as close to perfect as possible or as far from perfect as possible. I should Now is that. this, is it, is it the handwriting of what, or is there a stock handwriting that, that I select? How does that work? Yeah. So if you're a famous uh, quarterback, you can spend the money and have your own handwriting. Right. Um, if you're any, you know, because it's about 1500 bucks for us to go through that and recreate that. If you're anybody else, you can go on our website and we have 35 um, or 40 at this point handwriting styles for you to choose from. You just pick the style you like. And then, and those are uh, either written by some of my employees or other people, uh, clients of ours that have allowed us to use their handwriting. So, you know, you just pick the handwriting you like and, and, and you go from there and it's no, no additional cost. You know, one of the things I'm thinking about, Ryan, my, my oldest son, uh, in his early development, he had fine motor skills, uh, fine motor skill problems. And so he never really developed great handwriting. And my handwriting, to be honest, is horrible. Same. Like, <laughs> like absolutely horrible. Like people, I can leave my notes out. And people will look at my no, my kids or wife, whatever. They'll look at my notes and have no idea what's on the piece of paper. Now, I do, as I can, re I can read my own handwriting. But So I can see the benefit of this for people that have poor handwriting for whatever reason or that have uh, some type of, of fine motor skills you know, issue. Yeah. And it's, so it's not just about the efficiency of time uh, and things like that. It's like they legitimately want this output. Mm -hmm. But even if they could sign a thousand letters, it still wouldn't be legible. Right. It still yeah. wouldn't be beautiful. Well, I'll I'll do you one better. We have okay. This is for so for all of my family and friends that are not listening and watching <laughs> this, we still have our wedding thank you cards written out because yep. we finally got them written. We've been married eighteen years. 
<laughs> we still have them in the box, not sent. <laughs> At one point, as we start seeing people, we hand them. And we're uh, like, well, what the hell? We might as well get rid of them. But <laughs> we didn't do it for the longest time because we didn't want to write it. It was three friggin' lines. Yeah, when we, uh, <laughs> you know... So having this company, it's a benefit because my wife just sits there, you know, at her kid's birthday party. She has the handwritten app open. We have a little app. Ah, right. As people, as my son opens his gifts, she pounds it out, you know, copy, paste, changing a few things, using a template. And then they're done before, you know, the gifts are, That's are fantastic. enjoyed. So, oh, And then my for goodness. weddings uh, or employee appreciation or whatever, right. there's um, spreadsheet tools you can use that you just upload, you know, a thousand notes at once, or we integrate with major platforms, HRMS systems, Salesforce, whatever, um, to automate that process entirely yeah. and track it, you know, so right. that you'll know that, okay, on uh, August 8th, I sent Ryan a card. And then on August 9th, I called him, you know what I mean? So right. all that type of stuff is handled. So, so, let, let, ahead, yeah. say, so, so let, let's dig into that. So what, what are the use cases that you're seeing today uh, around mm -hmm. employee appreciation and recognition and things like that? How, how are employers, big or small, how are they, how are they yeah. leveraging this? So to start with, we do a lot on the recruiting front, both from recruiting firms mm -hmm. and the companies. So recruiting firms will um, kind of do minor prospecting with it, you know, if they have 50 people they want to get in touch with, whether they're probably at the executive level, they can use our service to send handwritten notes to them on their stationery. You know, you can go on our website and, and design your own cards and all that. Um, so we have that. Um, and then we have employers following up, but it's a little tough because it has to be very timely. So usually it's post hire, they'll follow up and say, you know, we're so excited that you're joining in the next few weeks. Um, and then certainly employee appreciation on an annual basis. There's the birthday card and then a Christmas holiday card. Um, those are kind of the big use cases. So um, it's prospecting after hire and then birthday and holiday. We don't overdo it. It's not like you're sending a handwritten card to an employee or anybody once a week. Well, I grew up, I grew up kind of worshiping and admiring Jack Welch on some level and studying him and one of his bits was sending faxes fax notes yeah. from after he'd meet somebody in Topeka or whatever the bit was he'd have a note that somebody else took down and he'd write out a bit and fax it to him yeah and he and it was just like it was a very personal way of connecting with his leadership and it is and the people that it, in in a way of just saying I don't know, like like we had lost that art of just acknowledging people and then also giving them some inspiration uh, and otherwise, and, may, and he signed his name to it. Now, again, we won't go back and forth on uh, did he do that or not, because I, I met him twice and I asked him about it at the last time when I met him at Sherm, and, and he did. Back then, he did sign them. Okay. No so I don't, I, I believe him. I mean, there's what, what's not and what's not to what's not to believe, but you know what what this conjures up for me is my uh, my dad in the '70s. He he ran a, a plant for a cargated a cargated industry warehouser, mm -hmm. and so he was a plant superintendent. And so everyone was trying to sell to him. All the vendors were trying to sell. The people that have paint or glue or you know cardboard, well, they're all trying to sell them. And man, they knew his anniversary date. They knew his kids' name and birthday dates. They they knew all the major holidays. Knew that we were Catholic, so knew all those dates. And he'd get cards on every one of those dates. Yeah. And so I'm thinking about like the old school sales. What worked? Yeah, yeah. And the, like um, that the, stuff works today, if yeah, if done we, well. A hundred percent. I mean, we have clients calling us all the time saying with a photo of a card they sent somebody because that person sent them the photo of the card saying, you've just got a client for life, um, that type of thing. And with it, within our platform, and I don't want to, you know, get into all the features of the thing, but 
within the platform, you can upload birthday lists and manage birthday and anniversary campaigns pretty Genius. easily. And you can even include like gift cards and stuff like that. But and, yeah, and, and, and you know, and, and when I go the... on podcasts, I'm not here to promote handwritten. I'm here to promote handwritten with an I, not with a Y. Right. Um, even if you don't use our service, you should be sending handwritten notes. There's there, I think, and it's pervasive. It's not, um, typically I don't talk about it in the, in the terms of HR, but it certainly is pervasive to everything. We are in a culture of entitlement. <laughs> and when you buy from me, I'm like, yeah, of course you're buying from me. Yeah. You know, why wouldn't I, you buy from me? I, but on your side, you've had the opportunity to research everything under the sun and come to the conclusion that I'm the right company. Uh, and if I, not only could you research everything, every service like mine or every product like mine and, and me being generic product service, you could go on Alibaba and have it yeah. made, right? So okay. um, people need to return to a gratitude, thank you mentality. Um, and I think that's what society is really missing. And that goes to employees too. We spend so much of our time. Like today I have an employee meeting and one of the things we're going to talk about is our employee appreciation party we're having next week. Um, so yeah, I mean, appreciation, you know, a lot of, you've all heard it being, you know, being appreciative is great for your own morale. It's great for your own, uh, you know, and it's true, but people need to hear it because everybody feels beat down these days. Um, yeah. And it just, you know, it, it just matters. So saying thank you matters. I I love this so much. I, Ryan, I know you, you've got a question. And after that, I want to talk about fulfillment. Yeah, no, so. I, well, I was just going to. So, David, I, I, I wanted to get your take on types of companies, size of companies that are leveraging yeah. something like handwritten in the employee process. So, and I don't know that you have this information, Um do you see? Is it is it a who should use it? Yeah, like do you see large Ryan? enterprises really gravitating, yeah. or is this or, the the mom and pop deli that has, or the the restaurant that has fifty employees that are waitresses and waiters, bartenders, and they're leveraging it there? I would say for employee recognition, I'd say it it skews larger. Right. Um, for instance, during COVID, we worked with uh, one of the largest vitamin manufacturers in the United States. And they sent out just thank yous to all their employees around the country. Um, I think it skews larger because if it's like a size of company like Handwritten, our company, 35 people, 40 people, they're going to know, right. you know, why did you mail this to me? Why didn't you just stick it on my desk? <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, Fair. Yeah. Fair statement. I mean, but to that end, we could also mail you a bunch of birthday cards and you stick them on their desk when, when the yeah. time is right. What, 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 I, so, what I love, it's what it, it, this is way off, maybe not way off, but what I love about you, David, and the way you're explaining this to us, you're very pragmatic and have a lot of common mm -hmm. sense in this. You're just like, yeah, well, just yeah. hand me the damn thing. Like, I know it's not real, yeah. right? So there's that, there's the, I think the, the line, William, I guess is what I'm looking for, yeah. between what is genuine versus not genuine perception. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the act, I mean, to some degree, the act of gratitude is what's important. Yeah. It's, it's, it's acknowledging and having intentionality about the act. Right. Like I, yeah. And, you know, what, some of the things we do is like we'll get all the CEOs to, to create signatures with us and then we'll scatter them over the page. And right. then, you know, we can ship them out in bulk to the HR manager. And when the birthday comes, they can pass those out with a gift card in it or something. Um, so there's ways to do it. But I would say this 10, you know, for, for employee, I also think just larger companies are better at employee, uh, employee um, appreciation yeah. than small companies. Small companies are just trying to keep their head above water. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think it, I think it does skew this use case skews larger. Now, on the other side, we have a lot of small, you know, independent realtors and mortgage. They use it with their clients uh, right. in the same manner, but not from an, you know, they're not giving their yeah. admin a card from us, that type of thing. So let's talk about fulfillment, the, fulfill, the backside of this, of, okay, someone makes an order and it's shipped, et cetera. So tell us a little bit about how 
that process happens? Yeah, so we have these 175-ish robots. Um, right. I say ish because one always breaks and one always comes, you know, whatever. <laughs> but these robots um, are running all the time, and we, we, it's not just the robots, but there's a system in place now that's, that's pretty – uh, overly engineered. So when the note is written, we use uh, no BS, computer vision, artificial intelligence to, to compare the vectors of what was written to what was supposed to be written. Right. So uh, vectors are lines. So, so what we basically do is identify on that written page, was everything written? Were there any errors? Did somebody bump the pen? Whatever. Assuming not, that order continues through the factory process and gets stuffed in a blank envelope. And then that blank envelope, we have some secret sauce to know what's in that blank envelope. That blank envelope is then written uh, with the appropriate address and name and all that. So we're able to marry all that up. Uh, the reason we stuff the card in a blank envelope is to reduce the risk of misstuffing. Right. And then it goes out the door. And the stuffing machines we use are industrial strength, which are industrial speed and they rem remove human error. So in and out, a typical order is one business day, and then you can expect the post office to crawl it to the destination within four to six business days. Right. And which is actually kind of good in some, and yeah. maybe not your use case, but if I'm um, a salesperson and I'm just going door to door selling solar panels, if I have a conversation with somebody, I get back in my air conditioned car, I tap out a note, I know that a week later they're going to receive it, which is perfect right. follow-up time. You know, so you just kind of have to adjust for that. And so, just to double check, you, with you can put return addresses on the yeah. envelope. And yeah. do you all handle postage? Do you put the? Yeah, it's uh, a sticker. It's right. a standard forever stamp, which just yeah, yeah. got raised to seventy-three cents. So it's not. Yeah. Cheap. <laughs> it's not forever. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> The other thing we now can do is we can actually provide a cost-effective delivery notification. Now, I will say that we've had issues with the post office actually following through on their end, so we're, right. we're, we're adjusting things. But basically, um, we're able to encode in the IMB. If you ever get a – I'm sure you have a million pieces of mail. There's little up and down lines on the bottom yep. of the envelope. Yep. We're yep, able to encode into that to um, – actually get back some information when it's delivered by the post office and we oh, can send cool. that back to you. Oh, that's cool. So you can, it's, it's like a tracking, but you can understand yeah, uh, it's like the delivery rate. Tracking. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, we, that's we cool. We charge only a dollar for that versus a full, you know, one right. of those big stickers because it's kind of a passive experience. The, the, the post office, uh, the postal delivery person doesn't have to do anything. Right. Um, it's it's very passive, but um, we, we've seen a little bit of mixed results with the reporting coming back. So, yeah. so David, as it, I'm working through a use case in my head here as a recruiter, uh, for an example, if I'm a recruiter, I'm, I'm, we're using, say, HubSpot, something to yeah. that effect, a CRM like HubSpot. And yeah. I'm reaching out to all of my candidates I, you know, in my process, the, the, the candidates that I'm interviewing that I phone interview or meet with, I want to send them a yeah. handwritten letter. So I, you know, I use yeah. HubSpot, right? To, I can run fulfillment, all that stuff. Can I send individual, if I'm, only, if I'm only speaking with five candidates a week, can I do yeah. that or do I have to, does this have to be volume based? No, um, from a pricing perspective, there's ways to sure. capture um, discounts with volume or with prepaying or doing a subscription. There's right. a million options on our website. But your use case is actually supported within HubSpot. So you can go into the HubSpot Marketplace, which is their version of an app store, mm -hmm. install the handwritten plugin, and it adds a button to HubSpot where you can click it. Um, HubSpot's a little weird in how they implement stuff, so it opens up handwritten. So right. you kind of need a big monitor because it opens it up in a window. And then it pre-populates the address from HubSpot. Um, you can then type a template or choose a template. And then after you send it, it gets recorded back to the activity timeline in HubSpot. Wonderful. And you can do that one-off all day, every day. 
Ryan's, Ryan's already downloading it. You're good. <laughs> yeah. <I'm done. laughs> you just, we can use you, that. You just converted. You just, during the call, you just converted Ryan. He's yeah. like, he yeah. didn't even know that, Where do that I this swipe? was going to happen. Yeah. The, the main thing is, like, so pricing is always the thing. Like, if you want to get yeah. any sort sure. of discount, and I don't, again, I don't want to get into this, there's subscriptions, which are, right. you know, if you're doing five cards a week or something, it's going to be your best bet because you can subscribe, get a discount. If you don't use it all, it rolls over. That typical, you know, the old singular method. Right. So singular with a C. So yeah, there's um, there's there's ways there's ways to to do it. I have not heard pricing. that. There's a lot of pricing a long options. time. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> we were just talking <laughs> we were about cell phones. And, and we were, we were yeah. talking about that earlier before the call. That's uh, not singular, but yeah. AT T and Verizon. That's that's funny. Yeah. yeah, Ryan's got to actually switch a plan, which is always a, a yeah. beating. Um, I can see from a business perspective, obviously in sales and marketing, uh, but but as as it relates to talent, on the front end of talent with candidates, be it executive search, but also the personalization that I think people would love to have. All candidates would like to be appreciated and to have yeah. something like that. Uh, just hit their hit their again. I think I think there there's the uptick of derail, uh, direct mail because we did it so well in the 80s and 90s, if you will. Then people got away from it. And if you send something to somebody now to their house or even to their business, and it's it's something nice, it's something personal. And again, it's it's a kind of a recap of the meeting, or hey, I really appreciated that thought that you said, or whatever the bit is. Like I could see. Ryan and I using this for podcast guests. Yeah. And and like we've just had a wonderful podcast and thank you. Like that's it. That's well, a now bit. they know it's yeah. fake. Yeah. You said something key. No. You said thank you. That's it. That's and it. That's a big thing. Like everybody tries to say, okay, what's the ROI on a thank you? Let's put, <laughs> just... let's put calls to action and QR yeah, yeah, yeah. codes. And you can yeah. do all that. Yeah. But it's going to ruin the thank you. Yeah, yeah. just and say thank you. You need a full stop thank just you. Just say thank you. Which I think on. is – just say thank yeah. you. I mean, what what is the matter with society? I, I seriously have these – what's the ROI? And I, and I think to myself, you know, yeah. what's, what's the matter with society? Yeah. You know, what's the ROI that? of smiling? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Albert Einstein, who was apparently pretty smart on some things, <laughs> said – not everything that gets measured that can be measured matters and not everything that matters can be measured. And I think it's so true in the, in, in the case of just saying thank you and yeah. doing that in a quasi or genuine, yeah. you know, however you, whatever your argument is sort of way. Let me give you um, one quick counterpoint. I had a SEO firm, a search engine optimization firm, yeah. I guess, wanting my business. So they FedExed me this thick packet and I opened it, and inside was a thick card. Okay. And I opened that thick card, and as soon as I opened it, there was a video screen there with total blather, like corporate blather that I could not pay <laughs> attention to for yes. more than a second and a half because I was so distracted by two things. Number one, I'm a geek. We talked about this before the show. Yes. I wanted to know how the damn thing works. So I wanted to tear it apart and see, you know, was it a Raspberry <laughs> Pi or, you know, whatever – Technology was in it. More importantly, I thought, how much does this cost? Right. Uh, and if it costs a lot of money, they're in to make a ton of margin on me. And I don't want anybody making a right. ton of margin on me. That's right. So I was distracted by it. It seemed ingenuine, disingenuous, and it seemed gimmicky. And I thought it did a bad job. I emailed the guy back. I said, Thanks for the thing. Let me know where to send it back so you can recycle it. And, oh, by the way, have you thought about just sending a handwritten note? You might get a better response, a less distracting response, a, right. a response that doesn't garner the same, what the hell are they doing for my business type thing? I mean, there's ways to be gimmicky with lumpy mail and, you know, sending oh, yeah. a small doodad. But sending a video screen, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I've had, had a FedEx it right, like so oh, yeah. twenty dollars in postage right there. I've had three direct mail success stories. I've had a lot of failures, but three success uh, stories. One of them was with Deploy Solutions, Ryan, and we sent we got marble chess sets from oh, the cool. Philippines. 
So they're like 75 pounds. But we opened them up and took the queens out. Mm. And we'd send them for deploy for a customer. We sent we sent them direct. We sent them to the VPs, uh, uh, CHROs, et cetera. If you want the queen, you got to meet with yeah. us. That's the bit, right? Yeah. And brilliant. Hundred percent. Because that, I mean, because of the weight, it went through all the gatekeepers. It got to the desk brilliant. of the person of you wanted. So that one, that one was a huge success for Deploy. Um, another client, we did the head of the golf club. So we got when Big Bertha was really, really hot. We yeah. took the head off. We sent him the shaft. <laughs> and so we took the heads off. And they're like, again, sales deal. If you meet with us, all we need is 30 minutes. Meet with us, you get the heads. Brilliant. And 100% if you're going, don't get shafted. <laughs> That's pretty, no, that would have been good. That's clever. Yeah. And the last one was actually uh, quasi direct mail. We sent, uh, we did a deal in San Francisco. And we said, if you meet with us, we're going to uh we're going to bring a bottle of opus 1 to the meeting so yeah, all all we need is 30 minutes and so we did the direct mail and actually it was an integrated campaign but but we showed up like gangsters we showed up with a bottle of it was in a nice little wine box and all that stuff we showed up with a bottle of opus 1 never talked about it we yeah. just showed up put it on their desk and go okay here's what here's what we do here's how it could work you know like like that was the here's bit. Where you like, the thank you yeah. for your time. Yeah, here's here. Thank you so much for your time. Acknowledgement, your time is money, and it worked in San Francisco because of wine country. Yeah. It, with so that, but but again, is uh, I think like I've done a bit for Ceridian where we uh, gave away gift cards for doing demos, and we we just basically said, listen, your time's money. We appreciate that. And here's a $50 gift card. If you sign up for a demo, do the demo. Card's yours. No strings attached. Yeah. yeah. Just acknowledgement that your time is money. So, you know, we're, we're a small to mid-sized organization, and, and I used to be the gatekeeper for everything, including trade shows. And my name was still <laughs> on the trade show. Oh. And I'm too busy these days, and I missed the – I missed the the registration date on a major trade show we attend. Not Sherm. We were at Sherm, actually. But um, but I missed the registration date. So in my company management meeting last this week, I said, look, I, I dropped the ball. I should have passed it off to marketing. It was my bust. This is what we're going to do if we cannot get a trade show booth. Um, we're we're going to have to use last year's attendee list because we won't get this year's. Let's send out letters to everybody, handwritten notes, as we always do, and it drives traffic. But if somebody sits with us in the food court yeah, of yeah, the yeah. convention center, gotcha, that trade pizza. show would have cost us $8,000. We will divide up that $8,000 by the number of meetings. They will get $400 cash yeah. just for sitting with us. It, at, it'll probably you know, be more effective. Yeah. It'll, the, it'll, it'll probably be more effective. Yeah. I mean, it would be interesting to see the A/B test on this, but, yeah. but uh, I, I I like that actually because it gets you away from the busyness and the loudness and all the craziness that yeah. happens in a trade show floor. It actually might be more effective. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, it's yeah. The problem is getting the attendee list, but we'll yes. we'll just go off last year's. So I I think that one of the other things I was thinking about is performance reviews. And especially where people, you know, on both sides, where people have done exceptionally well and where people, you know, need some, some, some guidance. I could see people, especially in large corporations, tying this to a performance management uh, system like, like success factors. Yeah. And be able to do this. And, you know, again, it's going to be documented. It's in their record. But it's another way to like, okay, we had the meeting. We talked about it. Here's the things you're doing well. Thank you so much continue and and the same thing for the people that aren't doing well it's also important for them to get that the the, the acknowledgement of the meeting and the importance of what was said between the two people yeah yeah so i think 100%. there's plenty of you i think there's plenty of talent use cases oh, there's, a, there's a ton yeah no, absolutely a ton D- david what, the question that one of the questions i had from earlier is you, you mentioned templates you can go and create your what you want to say and you know yeah. all that stuff. Am I as as a company? Am I able to go in there and say create 
five different templates and then have variables baked into those yes. templates and say, you know, for example, William works in engineering, but you work in marketing. So you're yeah, an asset yeah. to the engineering team as opposed to marketing and then have like five or six templates for each individual department. So it's, it's a little randomized and kind of makes, you know, makes it a little more personal for people. Yeah, you can. Um, I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I only have a few minutes left. I got to go. No, you're good. Um, yes. The, the short answer is yes. The, the long answer is there's two ways to do it. Um, the, the, the two ways to do it are if you do a bulk upload, right. you can create unlimited um, data fields or whatever that you want, replacement keys, where every single node, it could be like, Dear first name, so nice meeting you at location, custom snippet closure. And what I mean by custom snippet is you could then go through and fill in all those custom snippets. Right. Hey, Ryan, love the new, the new backdrop that you don't have on your, on your <laughs> uh, call. Nice. Yeah, you know, what, good. We were joking about that before the thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, so so you, could, you could do that. The other way you can do it is in um, – in, in the website, in your little address book that you create, you can create unlimited data fields, I think they're called. So in addition to first name, last name, business name, um, you can create unlimited additional data fields. So if you wanted to create a data field called department, right. which would be useful, you know, just for whatever, and then you can insert those data fields in the document. In addition to templates, we had to get on the AI bandwagon, and about a yeah. year ago, we added ChatGPT, so, which is kind of makes the – for a while, we had an account manager come up with ridiculous templates and add them to everybody's account as a starter. Now you don't need that because ChatGPT does it for you. You can go right. in, right. you know, thank Ryan and William for being on their podcast, and it'll write the most flowery uh, note you've ever heard, and then you just, you know, use that. And if you like it, you can then save that as a template and use that moving forward too. Love it. David, thank you so much for carving out time for us in the audience because absolutely love what you're doing. And I think it's important. And I think the emphasis on gratitude and thank you needs to be heard more. So just, we appreciate you, brother. Hey, thank you. And, and um, I will email you after the show to get your dresses. And obviously thank you both appropriately as well too. Absolutely. That works. Absolutely.